take your Bibles tonight and turn with me to uh, 1 Timothy chapter uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 11. 1 Timothy chapter 6, 6 through 11. When you find that in your Bible, if you'll stand as we honor the reading of the Word of God. First Timothy six, six through eleven. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Starting in verse, if you have that, say amen. Starting in verse six. But godliness with contentment is great gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would be with the preaching now as the preacher comes to preach momentarily. And Lord, I pray that you would uh, help us, Lord, with what it is that you have us to learn or what it is that you have us to hear tonight, Lord. Uh, uh, Not just somebody, but we all need what it is that you have for us tonight, Lord. Help us to empty our minds and our hearts, Lord, and of ourselves and of the cares of this world so that we can be filled with you and your spirit. Bless the service now, in Jesus' name, amen. Go bow down 
At the judgment seat of Christ, we must give account for the things we've done with our lives. I will live my life for Jesus Christ, so that in eternity my life will be. The needs of a husband, the needs of a husband. So, Jasmine, pay attention, okay? Um, husbands are needy people. All right, all right, let's go home. Now, Father, we... They're probably the neediest people on the planet. They find themselves the head of marriages, the head of the wife, the head of a family, the head of children. Uh, sometimes they're the boss at work. When you fall in love, you don't think of those things, at least I didn't when I fell in love with, uh, where'd she go? Uh, this, yes. I didn't think of any of that okay, uh, what my needs would be and all that stuff, and I needed a quiet wife and this and that. I just knew she was sure enough good looking, and I, I wanted to spend the rest of my days and grow old with Julie Barnes. Uh, but reality soon hits you after you're married, and husbands find themselves most of, most of the time lacking in... Um, most of all, character. Uh, most men are lacking in character. I definitely was, still am. Uh, so and, and, and you, you realize this stuff when it's too late, and you always already said, I do. Um, so I found myself lacking in character. You find yourself uh, lacking, you know, physical needs, uh, spiritual needs, emotional needs. You're just a, a mess. And why anyone wouldn't marry a husband, I have no idea. Uh, but, but they do, okay? And uh, ladies, I'll help you out a little bit. Uh, I've been married 40 years, and so I think I've got a little experience, not as little more than others and less than a few. Uh, so this is just practical stuff that will help you. Needs of a husband. Husbands need their wives to develop a meek and quiet spirit. That's a huge problem in a lot of marriages. Yeah. First Peter 3, 4 teaches that a woman, oh, I think I gave this, is this up here? But let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, of great price. God puts a great price on a meek, a lady with a meek and quiet spirit spirit about her. There's nothing worse than a loud, nagging woman. Roy, sit still. We're all over Sharon tonight, aren't we? That's because we love you. But there's nothing worse than a busybody wife who's nothing but talk doesn't do anything for God, 
but she likes to condemn, she likes to criticize, and this and that. And it's just loud to begin with. Uh, doesn't the Bible say something about you'd rather be on a your neighbor's rooftop and with a loud, boisterous woman? Okay. And so your your husband needs a somebody with a quiet, meek uh, spirit. Now, this is, take this to heart. Saying nothing sometimes says the most. And us, us men, we don't, we don't learn that either. Sometimes we just want to say something. We shouldn't say anything. Ladies, that's what your husband needs. Sometimes he just needs you to shut up. Amen? Shut us thou mouth. Fred, Wow. Okay, we're going to be some counsel. I got to do a marriage after this, so I ain't got time. <laughs> okay? What is meekness? Boy, it's interesting. Yielding one's rights. You give up your rights. Give up your rights. God only, God knew a woman could do that. Man, it's way too prideful to do that. In other words, you give up your rights. Most of the time, the wife is right, but she gives that up and lets the husband think he's right. See, you got to treat your husband like a little kid sometimes. What was that one point, okay? Uh, uh, something about the kid, the child in your husband, okay? Uh, he's a big kid sometimes. And it's up to you ladies, wives, to realize that and just give up your rights. I know you're right. Okay, but he he wants to think he's right, and he's such a child and so immature, like Fred, that you need to let him do that. That's what he needs. He needs. Okay, we need that. We need that. Uh, so you, you you may you may have rights and you may uh, be right, but true meekness is the giving of you being right or you're right. You understand what I'm saying? Meekness is a true sign of sacrifice. Somebody has to sacrifice in the marriage, okay? And it's usually the ladies, usually the ladies. Men are too prideful to do it. They won't do it. Most men are stubborn, okay, hard-headed. And uh, there's a few ladies uh, that are hard-headed. Men, you can say amen. Nobody wants to say amen about nothing. Meekness. Your Savior gave up his rights. He was right. He was the Savior. He was right in everything he did, but he gave that up. He said, okay, I'll die for you. Okay, you do what you want with me. You go ahead, and uh, I'll, I'll give up my life. I'll give up my rights. Um, so, um, here's one. The greatness of Jesus is found in his meekness, his kindness, and his love. For without those three, you would be in hell. Okay? Everybody wants, all the preachers and everybody wants to, you know, and, and there's a time for that. Preach about his power and how wonderful, he, how powerful he is and what he can split the Red Sea and this. But really what made a big difference in your life was his meekness and his love for you. That's why you cried and that's why you said, Lord, save me. Because you knew he would. And you know he was kind and meek, and, and he loved you. And uh, not many people loved you, but he did. And, uh, and the Bible says in Colossians thir or, uh, 3, um, 3, don't quote me, 3, 14, 3, 12. Uh, 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 love is above all. Okay? Above all these is love, charity. Okay? Uh, so... The biggest thing about Jesus was his love and his meekness and his kindness. Ladies, you want to be like Jesus? Your husband needs somebody like Jesus. He needs somebody that he can see and come home to every day after a hard day's work, okay, and, and see someone and, and have someone be meek and mild and not, not boisterous and, where you been? Where you been all day? Okay, how come you're late? And what this and that? And Jesus. Yeah. Women wonder why they get beat. That's why you get beat. Just kidding. Just kidding. 
Some women are constantly hyper, loud, boisterous. And, and most men, I think 99% of the men, I don't. Most men don't want that. Right? They, want, they want a meek and mild, uh, you know, not somebody that's just going to lay down dead uh, for everything. No. But someone who is loving and meek and mild and understanding. Because he didn't get none of that at work. Hello? He didn't get none of that at the, from the boss. Yeah. Um, so our society says it's normal for a woman to be over-emotional and loud, okay, and boisterous. The Bible says just the opposite, ladies. Yeah. We live in a world and on TV and Hollywood and all this stuff that puts a lady, the louder she is, and uh, superhero woman, Wonder Woman this and Wonder Woman that. That's just not biblical. That's not the way God made it. And that's not the way your husband needs you. Um, so the woman is supposed to be the one in the home who, if anybody is stable, the woman needs to be stable. She's that foundation. She needs that, she's that wise uh, advice. No, you don't need to buy that. We don't need to buy anything right now. You're spending way too much money. Let's just wait for a while. Hello. Hello. Yeah. I got to look to Fred again. Okay. Just kidding. Um, you're in that zone right there. Aren't you? Number two. Ladies, this is what your husband is looking for. Uh, most husbands. Colossians 3.14, and above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfection, above all. That's what we're talking about, love. Number two, a meek woman's confidence is not in her husband, in the security of the truths in Scripture, knowing how faithful God is. That's where, that's where her, uh, uh, what would I say, her confidence is. Yeah, that's where her confidence is, that you're following Christ, not because of your great leadership, it's because of God's leadership. And you have the brains enough to follow his leadership, to follow the Bible and follow the scripture. That's what she's watching. She's watching you. And not that you're perfect all the time, but you're making an attempt to follow. Oh, that's good stuff, Maynard. You ought to get that. She's watching. You might not think she's watching, okay? But she is watching you. And so the wife, look, you're... you're, you're, you're your man needs to know that you're a godly woman also and that you, you, she wants you to follow God. She wants you to make sure the family's in church. Okay, She wants that. You want that. Okay? The husband, you need a godly woman. You need a godly woman. And so um, now I put this up there too. This doesn't mean she doesn't trust or love her husband but realize her husband is flesh like she is, and ultimately joy and happiness comes from trusting Jesus Christ on every your whole life, not just salvation, okay, but trusting God with your money and with your, with your uh, expenses and all this stuff, all the decisions that you have to make as a couple. Okay, she, it, it, she, look, uh, boy, you, before you say you pick a mate, you better be sure. Okay, husband, that your wife is walking with God, that your wife's number one priority is following Christ. That's what you need. That's what he's looking for. He might think, okay, at first, yeah, she's a babe, she's good looking, she's a bomb, and that's, that's natural, okay? But that's going to wear off after about 40 years. No, I'm just kidding. That'll wear off. Uh, it won't be that excitement, okay? You're going to have to, uh, your husband has some needs. He's going to need a stable woman to, to make the right decision because you won't because you're a man. man. Men are stupid. We're ignorant. <clears throat> but we wear the pants, bless God. Well, most of the time. Most of the time, right? Psalm 37, 7 says, fret not thyself. Okay? A fretful woman. You know, your husband doesn't need a fretful woman all the time, fretting about this, fretting about that, 
talking about this, complaining about this, scared about that. Um, she needs a confidence, a confident woman, a confident wife. A fretful wife will attempt to manipulate her husband. So you know, you guys, you don't want somebody tr constantly trying to manipulate you into buying whatever she wants or going wherever she wants, doing this or whatever. She don't. He don't need a woman that's trying to manipulate him all the time. He can't be doing that. True love does not manipulate. Hello. Unless it's the NFL package. But anyway, here we go. <laughs> no, it's just too expensive for that. Besides, you can get all the cowboy games anyway. Doesn't matter. Uh, so meekness is steady. He needs a steady eddy. He needs somebody that, that you know, doesn't change with the winds all the time. Doesn't come up with wild ideas all the time. He needs somebody that's steady, not, not fretful, okay, and makes rash decisions. He needs a, does anybody have a wife like that in here? Anybody have a wife like that in here? No, I mean steady, not fretful. Steady. Meek people. When the storms come in life, you need, meek people are steady in storms. They go through storms. They're fine with storms. Loud and boisterous people, they they panic, okay, because they got to be the centerpiece. Hello. So, um, boy, your husband needs somebody who is very steady, and uh, your husband needs somebody that knows that you're going to make the right decision, that you'll be in your place. Hello. Yeah, yeah. that's what men are looking for. Um, you're not looking for this Wonder Woman kind of wife. That's not going to happen. That's not what we're looking for. Maybe the younger man thinks that's what he's looking for, but time will tell. That's not what he's looking for. He's looking for someone who's steady, who follow, who's following Christ, and making sure you follow Christ. Not, not uh, um, what do you call it, nagging all the time. Oh, you should wear a tie, and you should have won this, and you should have done that, and you're, uh, you should teach Sunday school, and how come you don't, oh, shut up. Don't nag. Don't nag. You ought to be thankful he's in church. Praise the Lord. Uh, most men aren't, okay? Uh, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in the way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Uh, a, a man's looking for a wife who, when things come and bad things happen and storms come, she doesn't panic. Okay? She doesn't complain about somebody else having something and her not. Why can't you buy me this? Uh, Edgar buys Serenity that. Why can't you buy me a gun too? Okay? <laughs> so, all men want women who carry nine millimeter. Write that down. <laughs> Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Jesus is asking you wives to come to him, not your husband. Jesus wants you wives to come to him, not your husband. Your husband, yes. But he wants mainly to come to him because you will do your husband no good unless you follow in Christ, unless you're reading the scriptures, unless you're a, a woman of prayer, unless you follow Christ. If you're not walking with God, you will do him absolutely no good. You will do him harm. And if you put on a show like you are, you put on a show because you show up to church, you'll do him harm too. He needs the real deal. That's what we need. Uh, a meek, spiritual wife is what a husband needs, not an aggressive, loud wife. Okay? The reason a lot of wives can't trust their husbands or are constantly trying to manipulate them to get what their way or get what they want is, is simply because they haven't learned to trust Christ. If they can't trust Christ, they'll never trust their husband. Hello? You're not gonna, it's not going to happen. 
So seek ye first uh, the kingdom of God and all the things. Will, everything else will follow, be added. It will fall into place, I promise you. First things first. You, you married her too soon. You didn't make sure she was walking with God. You didn't make sure she was in church. Oh, she'll get saved. She'll start coming to church when we get married. Oh, what a fool. What a fool. Yeah. Um, mm. Now you're stuck. Okay, number three, stuck like Chuck. A husband needs a wife who displays poise. Not poison, poise. <laughs> poise, what is poise? Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am thereof to be content. Poise is contentment. Poise is content. Is your wife content? Husband needs wives that are content, whatever state they're in, okay, to be content with what they have. He doesn't need somebody constantly wanting to be like the Joneses, to be like this, or have a nicer car. Those things are fine. They come in time, okay, and he's going to work hard for those. But he doesn't need to come home, okay. He's doing the best he can at his job, most guys are. And not making that good of money. Most got, you know, because business are there, they don't want to pay out that much money. And they can get somebody else, okay, uh, to do the same job a lot of times. Okay? And your husband hadn't been at the job long enough to make good money sometimes. He doesn't need somebody constantly reminding him, hey, we need to do better in this. We need a bigger house. We need a better car. I need finer clothes, this and that. Hello. Not that anybody in here does that. But you need to show some poise. You need to show some contentment. Your, your husband needs to know that you're content. And being happy doesn't mean everything's perfect. It just means you look beyond happiness, okay, and you are content. You don't have to be happy all the time like the world defines happy. Did I do that? Uh, anyway, <laughs> you don't have to have this and have that and be totally comfortable all the time, have a brand new AC unit all the time. Hey, get by with them. Just call Mark. You can get by, all right? No, just kidding. Uh, don't call Mark. <clears throat> so Eleanor Roosevelt said this, happiness is not a goal. It is a result of a life well lived. When you get married, it, your goal is not to be happy. Live right, follow Christ, Okay, and then happiness will come when you're content, ladies. Happiness, your marriage will be a good marriage when you're content with what God gives you. Let your husband know you're content. That's a big deal, a real big deal. Godliness with contentment is what? Great gain, great gain. Not just gain, God says it's great gain. You're following God, you're walking with God, ladies, you're content, that is a great thing. That's going to help your marriage more than anything. 1 Timothy 6.6, 6, godliness with contentment is great. You, you, you can talk to many guys just in this church alone that they married the wrong broad, I mean the wrong lady, okay? And, uh, and it, it, just, it, it ruined a lot of things. You better be sure. You better make sure and mark her down. You better be engaged for at least a year before you ever get married. You better find out what she's like, what she's really like, what he's really like. Hello? Not at church, okay? What they're really like during storms, during troubled times. How do they act? What do they spend their money on? How do they talk? What do they listen to? What do they watch? What do they drink? What do they smoke? Hello? Husband needs confidence in his wife that she's got her act together. That's what a husband needs. He's got too much to worry about at work. He doesn't need to be worrying about his wife. Poised. Shows him, dress, dress appropriately. Dress appropriately. You know, poise is you ladies, when you're sitting down, you don't have to be constantly tugging at your dress to make sure your dress is low enough. Boy, it got quiet in there. Let me just say that again then. Poise is, is, is for a lady 
the poise we usually uh, think about is, is for instance, a, a, a lady doesn't have to worry about being modest. She wears a dress that is modest enough. She don't have to worry about tugging it down. She doesn't have to worry about the guy sitting next to her, checking out her legs and this and that. Hello? The husband doesn't even be worrying about that stuff. He doesn't need to be worried about you wearing a too low cut top in public. Hello. How many times have I said hello? Okay. Yeah, well, you need to listen. Whenever I say hello, you listen. I could say don't miss this. Just hello is better. It's one word. Dress appropriately. That's a big thing. I, I'm, I'm glad I don't have to worry about my wife not dressing appropriately. That's a big, that's a big load off my mind. I don't have to worry about that. I don't worry about the music when they were singing. I was thinking that. I don't have to worry about the music they're picking. I don't have to worry about that. I can concentrate on preaching the word of God. I don't have to worry about the songs or, or who's going to sing or what they're going to act like or how they're going to sing it. I don't have to worry about it. That's taken care of. Now, we can joke all we want to and ha, ha, ho, ho, he, he, this and that. But a husband needs security in that area, that he's not worried about his other, other guys checking out his wife. Hello. Don't miss that. Number four. You still want to get married? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Wives usually show more poise than husbands simply because men usually have a hard time being satisfied and content. It's the ladies usually, usually I say that. It's the ladies that are usually, the men are spoiled. We're spoiled. We want this and want that. We want to be just like, you know, I want to be like Tony. I want to have what Larry has. I want to have what Ray has. I want this and that. I want a nicer truck. I want a nicer car. I want a nicer house. I want this. I'm never content. Trust me. I deal, I deal with it all the time. Contentment is great gain, not only with wives, but husbands too. But Husbands are rarely content. Uh, look, your husband's going to make mistakes. Yeah, he's going to make mistakes. You're not his mother, though. You're his wife. He didn't want to marry his mother. He wanted a wife. Okay? Stop being such a mother hen to him. He doesn't want that although he sometimes needs it. Uh, he's going to make mistakes. And, but you married him, okay? So uh, it's sort of a reflection on you. You should have checked out who you married to begin with. But it's too late now. Now you need to fix it. Now you need to correct it. Hello? <clears throat> Here's an important one. Are you ready? And We're almost done. Husbands need a wife who can lovingly appeal to him while he is wrong and wisely respond to those who question him. There's going to be people that question, question your husband. Don't, don't put down your husband in public. Don't do it. And don't, you don't want to be talking to other people about your husband to begin with so much unless you're praising him. All right? Remember, you married him now, so that's a reflection of you. Is it a reflection of your stupidity or your smartness? Which one is it? You don't want to be talking so much about your husband, okay? Um, now, get this if you don't get anything. Be careful that you don't say things that will crush his spirit, like he ruined my reputation, or our testimony is garbage now because of you, and we can't pay our bills because you lost your job, and, you know, you blew it this and that, you blew it with the kids, and you, don't say stuff like that. The worst thing you can do with your husband is crush his spirit, because sometimes that's all you got left. When things aren't going his way, he needs a cheerleader. This is a rough world, and it's cruel, and it's tough on a man, as well as it is a woman, but he needs a woman that's going to pep him up that's going to say good things about him. Like, again, you married him, so you better. You can appeal to your husband if he makes a mistake. You can appeal to him. If he makes a wrong decision, you can come to your husband and say, I think we, 
we better do this, honey. We better not buy that. We better do this or this or that. Just like you can appeal to God. Many instances in the Bible that people appealed to God, uh, many examples, and God changed his mind. He said, okay, we'll do this. I'll give you 15 more years of life. Okay? Uh, Moses, he begged for the, people, for the people's life. And God said, no, I'm going to kill them all. Moses said, what did Moses say? He said, look, what about your reputation, God? He didn't badger. He didn't talk down to God. He knew better than that. Okay? But he, he said, well, what, you're the one who, who brought them out. You're the great God who brought them out of Egypt. Now you're going to kill them in the desert? How's that going to look like to you, God? What's it going to look like? What about your reputation? Very smart. Very smart. Okay? Uh, that's how you can appeal to your, uh, I need some ushers out here. Uh, uh, that's how you appeal to your husband. You don't badger him. You don't say, you stupid, you made a mistake. Now look at us. Now we're hocked up to our neck. Now we can't buy nothing. All we can do is pay our credit card bills. Hello? That does you no good. You can appeal to your husband like, man, look, honey, you are smart in this area. Why don't we go this way? Why don't we do this? I think this would be best for us because you're so good. You're so, I think you ought to, you know what, honey? Instead of paying $800 to change that, uh, to change that oil filter or whatever it is, I think you ought to call Mark. No, uh, I think you ought to do it yourself. You're such, you're such a good mechanic. Call Cobb. No. Uh, you, I've watched you work on motors. I think you could save us a lot of money. I think you can do it. Your husband's going, no, I can't do it, right? Uh, I, I'm not too good at that either. But you get my drift. You can appeal to your husband in a way that is uplifting to him, not degrading to him. That's a big thing. Um, Got to stop. A husband needs a wife who is grateful for all he has done and is doing for her. Good husbands are hard to find, just like good wives are. So if he's making an attempt to do right, and he's done it right for many years, how long have you been married to him? Okay, Then let him know. Hey, we, we've been, we, we're, we're making it. We're doing good. Okay, A lot of people are, are divorced. A lot of people are not married this long. A lot of people don't have a house this soon. A lot of people don't have a new washer and dryer or a, a good vehicle to drive. A lot of people don't even have a driver's license. We're doing good. Does that make sense? That's what a husband needs. Those stories in the Bible about people uh, appealing to God, they're not there. Uh, they're there to show us that we can how, how you approach God. Don't approach your husband with a nagging, complaining, you did this and you do that. That does you no good. And it does definitely does not, it doesn't do him any good at all. You will crush his spirit, okay? A husband needs a wife who's grateful. Husbands love gratitude. Can I hear an amen? amen? Husbands, men in general, okay, they need to know they're a good husband. They're a good man. Uh, the more expectations, the less gratitude he gets. So don't put a lot of expectation. Am I making sense? I know I've been married for 40 years. I know what I want in a wife. Hello? He wants you to be grateful for the things he's done. He needs that. Remember, he's a child. He needs the gratitude. Everybody does, really. The Bible says a happy wife is a prize for a husband. A prize. P-R-I-Z-E. An unhappy wife is a public rebuke to a husband. Is a rebuke. You want to be a prize to him. Look, when I preach and I make biblical statements and I quote the Bible a lot, uh, people look to see my wife's reaction. They look to see her reaction. And she's going. <laughs> the most watched person in a church service is the pastor's wife. She's in a fishbowl. So you wives, don't overreact to things. You have, you have to deal with it, deal with it, approach him later. Not in public. Do not do it in public. Don't do it in public. 
You're a fool if you do. And, and everybody in here has learned the hard way, right? So, look, you, you, everybody's watching you, not as much as the pastor's wife. But one thing I've noticed about churches when I've gone to other churches, uh, churches with bad spirit usually have a pastor's wife with a bad spirit. You go into a church and it has a bad spirit, you don't need to be looking or asking, but you can mark her down. The pastor's wife usually has a bad spirit. Tricky. Anybody ever been to a church with a bad spirit? Yeah. So watch it, ladies. Be careful, ladies. Your husband doesn't need that. Gratefulness in a woman is attractive to a man. Be grateful. Your husband needs his ego lifted. He needs to know he's doing something right. Uh, your husband needs to be content with godliness. Okay? Many Christians, ladies, leave out the godliness while they're trying to be content. It doesn't work. You will never be content without being godly. You might follow what the world says contentment is, but that's not content. Having a bunch of money, that won't make you content. Hello? True contentment only comes through godliness. Serving Christ. Following Christ. Reading your Bible. Praying. Hello? And a husband needs to know his wife is respected by other people. Be careful. You better watch your testimony. Okay? Be sure you do things right. He needs to know that you're respected uh, when he's not around. He needs to know that you're not being talked about because of something you've done. He doesn't need to worry about it. Remember, he's got enough of worries at work. He's got enough to contend with. He doesn't need to have you. He needs to be secure in you. That's what a husband needs. I've just given you some basic stuff. When God gave you a husband, he gave him you to be a help meet to her. That's what you are. A wife was made for the husband. Hello? A wife was made for the husband. A husband was not made for the wife. A husband came first. The man came first. Get mad all you want to, okay? Put your little horns back in your head, honey, because the Bible said so. You want to go against God, go against God. I don't want to be around you. You want to listen to the fake news and all that junk and all the women's lib? Right? It's the devil straight out of hell. The Bible never says that a woman is better than a man or a man is better than a woman. The Bible gives each roles. We have different roles. And your role, wifey, is to be a helpmeet to your husband. A helper, that's simply what it means. A helper. You help him. Whatever his purpose in life is, help him get there, man. Or do you have too much pride? Or do you want to be the leader? Do you want to be the Annie Oakley of the family? <laughs> well, it's not going to work out because that's not how God made you. Okay? See, you see what happened to, uh, to Adam when, it turned, when uh, uh, you know, uh, Eve, he, he, his, his wife listened to the wrong person. Who are you listening to? Your husband needs to know that you're listening to godly music, that you're, 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 you're reading godly material, that you're hanging around with godly friends. Hello? That'll give him confidence. He's got enough worries, like I said, uh, and concerns. Don't let the lack of respect people have for you be one of them. Please don't trash talk the man God gave you. Too many women tell me what's wrong with their husbands, and I'm trying to point out what's right with their husband, and they're giving me all these what's wrong with their husband. Why don't you concentrate on some things that are right with your, your man? You chose him, remember? You chose him. Okay. Um, I don't think. Warning, warning. The least creative but most tempting response to a problem is to pretend it does not exist. Quickest thing that's going to ruin your marriage 
It's pretend something doesn't exist. It's pretend a problem is not there. And you will not deal with it, and therefore it festers, and it gets all bloody and pussy and ready to pop, and it will pop, and it will be a mess. And usually end in divorce. Usually end in separation. Why? Because you pretended, oh, it wasn't there. It wasn't there. There's nothing there. I don't have a problem. Okay? We don't have a communication problem. We don't need to, to get counseling. We don't need this. We don't need that. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. The only reason I'm telling you this is because I've lived it myself. And if you're, if you're honest, you, you've been through it too. Don't pretend that something's not there. You, he, he, he doesn't need that. He doesn't need that. He needs to know things are taken care of. What's the, I tell you the, one, the number one thing when you come home you don't want to hear, hey, we need to sit down and talk about it. We don't want to sit down and talk about it. We want to have, watch the Cowboys. We want a full glass of iced tea. We want some uh, shrimp with some sauce. And we want to watch the game and some chocolate chip cookies. We don't want to talk about, you know, life's philosophy and what we're doing wrong and this. We don't want to talk about it. So don't pretend you know, the only way out of that, okay, is don't pretend that something, like, take care of it. Take care of it. Ladies, be sure it's taken care of. Don't hide it. Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you for husbands. Thank you for wives. Thank you for the institution of marriage. And I pray that you bless this marriage that um, Leslie and uh, Jasmine are about to partake in. They're serious, they love you, they want to live for you, and they want to do what's right in their relationship, and that is marriage, okay? Everybody stand at your feet. The altar's open. If you want to come and pray, as the music plays, you come.